day everyone. It's a very rainy day today and I'm actually filming myself through my studio window and I'm sure the window is not that clean so hopefully you can see me all right. But I did want to make sure we got some sea view in today. Um, I did yesterday however get while it wasn't raining I was able to go to another great little um, antique thrift type store that I really like and it's very unique. So uh, today's video is going to be basically me sharing the footage of going in there. I did get a couple of little inexpensive treasures for uh, maybe in future project. We'll see. Um, but I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, and if it's raining where you are, snuggle up with a nice cup of tea and have a fun, enjoyable browse through a Cape Cod antique shop. Today we're heading out to a roadside Cape Cod cottage antique shop that I really, really love. It's very New England coast. <laughs> you see the old cedar shakes and all the old buoys and lobster traps and things. And now this is in still in Cape Cod, but it's on the other side of the bridge. So it's just off the Cape and it's in a town on the bo that borders Onset and Buzzards Bay. And the reason I was here today was I was going to my other antique shop in Buzzards Bay to buy that amazing antique vintage wallpaper folding screen I showed you in my last vlog. And unfortunately they were closed, even though they're supposed to be open, but that's just the way it is cur currently. But I forgot this place and it's been yonk since I've been here. So I thought I need to stop and share it with all of you. I'm going to try to go as slowly as I can. I still haven't got my gimbal set up yet, but this way you can kind of have a little peruse around and see all the old nautical things, buoys. It's really just a random assortment of things. Now, although it looks somewhat like a junkish place or even a bit of a brocante or a thrift shop, the owner is actually an antiques dealer. So some of his things are, are quite pricey. So it's a mix of like, you know, I can find things for three to five dollars, but then He's a collector of Adirondack pack baskets, which are beautiful, but those can be, you know, three to five hundred dollars. Oh, I love this old green gate outside. He has a lot of outdoor garden things, and I would love this gate to design a rose garden around. It wasn't too dear. It was around 300, which is actually quite cheap for that type of old metal out of my budget currently, but I just had to share it with you. And then as you enter the front of the building, this is what you see from the roadside. There's all sorts of oars and buoys and little statuettes and it's, you know, the rusted old door. It's very New England Cape Cod. As we walk through here, you can see there's a, an outdoor pergola area where more so in the summer, you'll have more things set up, uh, more outdoor garden things. And, and I love like stone garden ware or um, Victorian metal urns, that type of thing. Oh, I thought this was adorable. The uh, stays from a gate with paintings on it, which I might steal that idea for something to do for our Christmas this year, our nautical Christmas. Okay, so let's head inside. Again, trying to slowly give you a sweep of all the things that just sit outdoors and in through the rusty door and inside. Now this place is packed to the gills, but lots of treasures and you could take many trips here. Here on the right, you can see some of the Adirondack pack baskets already. He has quite a few in here. And I like how he has the uh, screening on the wall to hang old fishing lures and stuffed fish, wooden um, plaques and decoys. A lot of things really up my alley here. Oh, now this is the epitome of kitsch, but I really, really love it. This seashell lamp with the seashell lampshade was really, I thought it was amazing. I think it would look wonderful on like a round table, either in a foyer or in say a library with uh, books surrounding it. It was quite dear though. And the old brass or the old copper dive helmet was really interesting. So you can see it's small, but really packed full of treasure. And those are just hand painted uh, old glass uh, sea weights. Now I love this green cabinet with the pierced metal front. Would that not be a perfect piece in, the ki in a kitchen? I wouldn't touch it. I would just clean it up a bit. And wouldn't that be wonderful in the boathouse kitchen? So I'm going to come back and think about that one. I actually forgot to take a photo of the price. So I'll have to come back. This alligator bag, I think it's actually a doctor's bag 
It was so beautiful. I almost got that for myself for my birthday gift, but it was, I think it was $125 and I really shouldn't spend money on something I don't currently need, but isn't it beautiful? When you're not using it, you can have it sit around and be lovely in your home. This is a fun little section because you can kind of dig through all the little pieces to find ship's bells or old doorknobs, things we could use to make fun cabinet handles. Lots of old glass lamps. I love the green jug with the old fisherman on and this cup I really liked. It's just a simple little gentleman's uh, teacup, but because it had, it wasn't anything particularly fancy or, or amazing, had a little chip, but because it's I, anything equestrian, I just go for and I really love hunt scenes. So that's a possibility. I almost bought this copper mold which a copper chocolate mold and obviously it's a bunny so it would have been perfect for bunny haul and forty dollars is not really a lot for an antique copper chocolate mold but I felt it probably is out of my budget I'm trying to be really good and penny wise but wasn't it darling <laughs> it would be beautiful in the kitchen if I ever get to make the kitchen over at bunny haul and then we see just a random assortment of things I thought how he displayed the um, vintage softballs or baseballs was really cute on that little tree. If someone were a sports person, wouldn't that be a fun way to do a Christmas tree? And the little cabinet on the wall, I'll come back to that. I really like that. I forgot to ask the price, but I thought that would be sweet in a bathroom. And there's like the cigar store Indian and old signs and the big moose head. He does a lot of um, shopping in upper parts of Maine and in the Adirondacks, which is a little bit different vibe than the Cape. So it's often fun to come here because he does nautical things as well, but then there'll be more mountainous things like snowshoes and the uh, Adirondack pack baskets, that type of thing. So it's a nice change and it's a way to add more variety to your things in your home. So I, I really do appreciate coming here. Oh, this is a better shot of the cabinet with the, uh, that's the baseball tree, <laughs> the cabinet. Now it has now this is a little cabinet, so I do have to say little, <laughs> and it has a tiny little mirror. And then on the front is a, a metal latch that that front opens as a door as opposed to a drawer. So I thought it would just be really sweet in the bathroom. And then funny things like this, this is probably from the forties. This is fish it looks having a fight with a courgette with a lobster. I don't know why the courgette is its weapon. And uh, here's the other side of that amazing, really large seashell lamp. Oh, so a little history of the baskets. The Adirondack pack baskets are basically, I think they, they're they originally Native American, and they go, I think they found examples as far as like 900 BC from the Native Americans in this country. But the um, old trappers and things used them to, and, and right up in through the 19th century, used them to uh, carry fishing and hunting supplies, because obviously this was pre-backpacks. But there are some amazing examples of different type of black willow that are woven, and, and sometimes the straps are made out of something special. This was a particularly pretty, I like the shape and the color of this one. But this gentleman, he specializes in these baskets, so you will never find a good deal on them here because he knows what he has. I think probably the least expensive one you could probably hope to buy would be maybe $80 maybe 60 if it had damage, but I mean, they go up into the thousands, but still I can appreciate them for free. And as we sweep around, I'm just trying to get a nice slow view. Oh, and let's look at our cabinet again that I think would be amazing in the boathouse kitchen. And that pierced tin front is, I just love that. But again, I'm hoping by having slow sweeps, I know the camera's a little shaky, that you can watch it back again. And just, if you're stuck at home, have a fun little peruse around a Cape Cod style antique shop. He also has old uh, vintage fishing paraphernalia, what I, which I also love. The fishing creels, which is the little basket there, which you would wear fly fishing, and you could drop your fish through that hole on the top or you can unlatch the basket to access the fish afterwards. More fishing reels. And oh, here are more um, 
of the Adirondack pack baskets. They're really beautiful. I love the green one. It had a sort of a leathery cloth, oil cloth over it. These I need to go back and ask the price. They probably are not deer. One of them even had a damaged foot. But these little wooden figurines, I just love figurines like that. And I thought they would be adorable for Christmas. And here's some more t uh, stuffed fish, an interesting old wooden fishing creel. Uh, and um, oh, down here I had a love. This little, I didn't get a very good shot of it, but there's a Victorian ochre painted washstand. That was only $45 that I really think would be an amazing washstand that you could turn into a bathroom sink. So I put that in the back of my mind for the boathouse bathroom. Now back outside, I love these little copper garden ornaments and mainly because they feature wasps and praying mantis, two garden helpers that we often don't get to see depicted in garden ornaments. So I thought those were really sweet. And more glass fishing buoys and our fishing weights, floats, I mean. And then I want to take a quick little look. He usually has more things out, outdoors, more outdoor Victorian metal statuary and um, outdoor seating, which I love, but it's less this time of year. I love the urns. On the distance there, you could see the Cape Cod Railroad Bridge, which lowers down every day to let the trains off and on the Cape. This metal set actually pr is probably just from the 50s, so I should ask about the price because I don't think this would be too dear. And it's quite easy to paint this metal. So we could even make it, make it a fun color. But I was in love with this Victorian fountain. And obviously I do not have the budget <laughs> and it's not on my list to buy a, a fountain. And actually 1400 is not too much for a, an antique fountain like this, but well out of my price range. And this may actually be a reproduction Victorian metal bench. I really liked it. And this type of thing would actually be nice down here because Obviously, it does get weathered from the sea, but it's nice to have metal as opposed to wood because the wood does rot quite quickly here when we're on the seafront. And this was also expensive, so I'm assuming it probably is genuinely Victorian. It was 1100 So here's a, another look at the uh, outside of this very New England seaside place. And the two treasures I did buy today was this amazing jug with a hearty fisherman on. Now this was marked only 12, but I loved this little hunt scene cup. And it is actually a gentleman's mustache teacup. You can see this is here because as a gentleman would drink his tea in a Victorian invention, his mustache would lay here and he wouldn't get droplets of tea on his mustache. But I love hunt scenes. Anything with equestrian on I'm mad for. So I think uh, I want to do something with this for Christmas at uh, Old King's, even if it's just a simple decoration or just on the mantelpiece with some, maybe some twigs and some Christmas bulbs in. But I want to do another floral Friday, although it won't technically be on Friday, using this jug. I just love this green. And uh, I'll probably use it at King's for now, but I think its final destination will be the boathouse because I really like that green. So, all right. Well, let's get on to ending this video. In between the rain, I went out and the droplets of rain on the bittersweet was so beautiful that I thought in lieu of a walk today, I would just do a quick little shot of the droplets of rain on the bittersweet. And then the clouds were amazing the day. We would get rain and then they would push through and we'd get a little streak of blue and the, the, the sun would shine and then the rain would return. So just this is in lieu of our walk. And then again to the beautiful droplets of the still bursting open bittersweet from golden yellow to beautiful burnt oranges. Hello everyone. It's still raining here today. Hopefully you can see me. I didn't want to take the camera out again, but it's been a fun uh, rainy day to stay inside and browse through all the footage I took at the antique shop. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video and I will see you on the premiere on Sunday, which will be at one o'clock um, my Eastern Standard Time, which I believe is five o'clock UK time. I'm not sure. I guess the clocks have changed now. So maybe it's later or earlier. You'll have to sort that out. <laughs> but it'll be one o'clock Eastern Standard Time here. It may be a short one because I do have a busy weekend, but we shall see. All right. Uh, thank you for hanging out with me today, and I will see you on Sunday and in the chats at Lalonde, at Dan's, everyone's. All right. 
Cheers. And remember, stay creative.